All right, so what I want to do here is to continue to talk about the short circuiting in JavaScript. We've already seen things with the logical OR operator and how that works. Basically, it's going to allow JavaScript to avoid this unnecessary work. So if I did something like, let's say, console.log, and let's say I type in some names in here. So I'm going to start with some South Park names. Let's say we do Stan. Let's say we do OR. Let's say we do Cartman. Let's say we do OR. Let's say we do Kyle. And let's say we do OR. Let's say we do Kenny. Okay, for example, JavaScript does not need to evaluate this or this or this. With the logical OR operators present, remember it works from left to right. And as soon as JavaScript encounters one value, okay, it could just be one, that's true, the whole expression is going to end up being true, right? That's how the logical OR operator works. So because this guy right here is truthy, it's a non empty string, it stops and says, hey, I have something that's true. So I'm just going to return whatever this is. In this case, it's Stan. Okay. It does not need to check this or this or this. If we were to copy this and let's say we put something here that's falsy. So you could pick something like, let's say the empty string now. Okay. So this is falsy. So JavaScript has to keep working. So it's now going to come here and say, okay, well now this is truthy. So I'll return this. So from the first line, line one, you would get Stan from the second line, you would get Cartman. If I copied this again, let's say we made this like null or something, okay? Now it would keep going and you would get Kyle, okay? We could do one more, copy this, and let's go ahead and put something like not a number, okay? This is another falsy value, and now we would just return Kenny, okay? So let's quickly pop open the terminal, and let's go ahead and run this. So you see you get Stan, Cartman, Kyle, and then Kenny as expected. Okay, so we understand how that works. Let's see how it would work if we basically selected these, so I'm going to highlight it, I'm going to hit control D. Okay. And that's going to keep highlighting all the instances. It's kind of like using a multi-line selector. So I'm just going to delete that and put the logical and operator in its place. And let's think through how this is going to work now with the logical or operator. Again, if at least one is true. So if just one is true, the whole thing is true, right? Cause it's or but with the logical and operator, everything has to be true. Okay. So it's going to be the reverse situation now. So if one thing is not true, it's going to immediately return, right? So here you have something that's truthy, 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 and truthy, right? So you're going to end up with Kenny, right? Cause everything is true here. You have something that's an empty string. So this is falsy. So it's going to immediately exit and just give you that empty string. Okay. If you want to change this around, let's say we put maybe like a name in here. So let's say here we go back to Stan. Okay. And then we have null. So we'll just get null, right? Because it's found something that's falsy, right? So it's just going to exit, right? Because there's no way that this whole thing can be true. It's just trying to save time. So let's change this back to Cartman. So I've got to put quotes here. So Cartman, and let's change this back to Stan like this, and then we'll keep the not a number here. So from line one, again, everything is going to end up being true. So we're just going to get the last value, which is Kenny. On line two, because this empty string here is falsy, again, because we have the logical and operator and everything would need to be true for this whole thing to be true, it can just stop here. It doesn't need to evaluate this or this or this. It's found a falsy value, so it can just stop. It's going to give you the empty string back. Here, it's going to be true, and then this is falsy, so it's going to stop. You're going to get null. Here, this is going to be true. This is going to be true. You're going to get not a number because this is falsy. So let's pop this open. Let's go ahead and run this. So you get Kenny. You get your empty string, you get null and not a number. And let me wipe this and I'm going to give you a fresh example. It's going to be a bit strange. It's not something you'd want to do. It's not practical, but I just want to show you the power of using this guy. Okay. So I'm just going to say something like const let's go Jamie's Jamie's score like this. I'll set it to 60 and I'm going to go const let's go Jen's score. Okay. We'll set this to 88. We're just going to keep this really simple. All I'm going to do is make a little console.log statement. So I'm going to console.log and I'm just going to put some backticks in here and say Jamie has a higher score, okay, than Jen. And you could put the score in here if you want. You could put maybe like Jamie's score. So Jamie's score and I'll put versus and I'll put Jen's score in here. Okay, so something like this. Again, you can make this as complex as you want. I'm just keeping it simple. I only want this to run if Jamie has a higher score than Jen. Of course, we can use any type of conditional statement that we want, but if we wanted to think about this, and I encourage you to pause the video and think about this on your own, how could you use the logical and operator to make this only work if Jamie has a higher score than Jen? Because right now she doesn't. Right now this would say Jamie has a higher score than Jen, and you would see 60 versus 88, which is obviously false. So I hope you gave this a shot. 
I would say something like Jamie's score, okay, is greater than Jen's score, like this. Then use your logical AND operator, okay? So think about how this is going to work. Jamie's score is not greater than Jen's score, right? This is false. So because we're using the logical AND operator, it's going to short circuit and it's never going to get here. So you're never going to get to the console.log statement. You're basically blocking JavaScript's access to it. And so it only runs when you want it to. Okay. Now I'm not saying this is better than using an if else statement. I'm just saying it's available there. Okay. So you might see it when you're reviewing code. If we pop open the terminal and we run this guy, you see, you don't get anything, right? There's nothing. So we didn't get the console.log statement. If we close this and you were to remove this and you go back and we run this again, we get Jamie has a higher score than Jen, 60 versus 88, which is obviously not correct. Now, another thing you could do, you could switch that around. Let me hit Control-Z to bring this back. You could run one like this, and we can copy it, and then we could just paste it. We could flip this right here to a less than, okay? So now, if this is true, then I basically want to do this. So Jamie has a lower score, okay, than Jen. It'll list the scores. So I'm only going to get one of these to run, right, because only one of these could be true. So either Jamie's score is greater than Jen's score, in which case the and guy is going to send me over here, right? So I'm going to console log this one, or it would be true that this is going to be true, right? So Jamie's score is less than Jen's score, in which case this is going to kick in and I'm going to come over here and run this. But one of these is going to fail, so I'm not going to get two console.log statements running, only one. So let's pop this open. Let's go ahead and run this. And you see Jamie has a lower score than Jen, 60 versus 88. If we change the score, let's say we make this 95 and we go back and we run this again, we see Jamie has a higher score than Jen, 95 versus 88. So everything is working as expected. Now, again, I don't think you should go through and change all your if else statements to this. I'm just showing you that it is available. You might see it when you're reviewing code. Now, let me show you another use for this. I'm going to set up a simple little object. I'm going to go const user. And basically, let's go ahead and say something like the first name, and maybe we'll make this Jessica. Let's go the last name, and maybe we'll do something generic like Brown. Let's do a method, get full name. So get full name. And let's go ahead and say something like an anonymous function. And maybe we'll go console. Well, oh, actually, let's just return a string. And I'll go this dot the first name. And I'll go inside of here, this dot, the last name. So we're just getting the person's full name. So something we've done before, something we've done a million times, okay? So if I'm getting this from somewhere else, maybe I don't know if this method exists. So first, let me just do this. I'm gonna console.log. I'm gonna go get full name, okay, like this. Or actually, I forgot the user. So we need user.getFullName, okay, like this. And then I'm gonna copy this and paste this. I'm gonna go get age. So get age like this. So one is going to exist and one isn't, right? So if I console.log this one, I'm going to get Jessica Brown, right? Return to me so that'll be printed in the console. And this guy right here doesn't exist, right? This is going to not be in our object, right? So this is going to give you an error. It's going to say it's not a function. So let's pop this open. Let's go ahead and run this. So you see that you get this little error here. It's going to say user.getAge is not a function. So how could we prevent this from happening? Let's go back. And let's think about how we can use our friend, the logical AND operator. Let's say that I come over here and I just say something like user dot get full name like this. I'm just going to check if it's undefined or not, right? So we're not calling the method. We're just checking to see what it is, okay? And if it's undefined, meaning it's not in there, it's going to be falsy. So I can use my logical AND operator here. So basically, as long as this does not come back as undefined, I'm good to go. Right, I can console.log this guy. In this case, I'll do the same thing. I'll go user.get age like this and our console.log statement. So you're going to see in this case, this right here is never going to run. Okay, I'm only going to run this guy right here because it's in there. So let's go ahead and pop this back open. Let's clear this out. Let's go ahead and run this. And now you just get Jessica Brown. Okay, so you don't have that error that's coming to you. Let's close this. And I'll show you if you put something in here, let's say we do maybe get age like this and we'll go function and I'm just going to do something simple, nothing complicated. I'm just going to return, let's say 33, okay, something like that. And if we pop this back open now, let's go ahead and run this and it looks like I forgot a comma. Let's go back. So I forgot a comma here. Let's go back, clear this out, run it again. 
And now you get your Jessica Brown and 33 as expected. 